Mother Nature, she kind of put her fingerprint on the Masters, but they yeah, still true. did get it through. You know, we talked about Friday and those trees falling, mm-hmm. you know, um, midday Friday or, or late Friday, whenever those those trees fell. You know, no spectators were hurt, thank goodness. But Mother Nature definitely put her thumbprint on this year's Masters. And John Rahm, dude, he he battled, you know, the very first hole Thursday morning. I thought to myself, this was after, this was, you know, probably 18 hours after our our fantasy Masters draft in our boss's room. And I was like, John Rahm comes out. He four putts. Yeah. The number one hole, <laughs> bo- double bogeys it. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I'm glad I didn't pick John Rahm. Well, now I <laughs> now wish I like, would I have. So. Can I show you? I got to show you a funny video, too, um, about that. Let me see if I can get this pulled up here and, okay. and, uh, and ready to go, where he kind of talks about this a little bit. So, um, okay, yeah, here we go. Yeah, so this is John Rahm after the win, of course. Right. And he's he's talking about what happened before the Masters started right. and that four putt. Right. So uh, let's see what he has to say. Here we go. For those people who believe in, in jinxing other players, people, and whatever it may be, Thursday morning – when I was on my go- on getting on the golf cart to get to this putting green 10 minutes before my tee time, I saw a text from a good friend of mine. And I'm going to name him because he is a Super Bowl winning champion, Zach Ertz. Um, he, he said the text, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to paraphrase here, but he said that first green looking like a walk in the park or something like that right now, 10 minutes before I four putt at the start of the tournament. <laughs> Well, so, that's, that's one way that happens, thank you, right? Zach. <laughs> Don't ever do that again, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was, and, and boy, did he bounce back, you know, just, yeah, even if you, even if you par that, if you're John, if you're John Rom, even if you par that hole and two putt it like you're supposed to do, I'm mm-hmm. not talking about getting a birdie and one putt, just a, normal par he would have won this competition by six strokes he still won it by four which is which tremendous is very good yes. and but if he doesn't four putt that i mean he runs away with this tournament yeah it, it probably really wouldn't have been close i mean because even that last day you know when he was making that comeback right because uh, he he did not lead going into the last day, right? Right. right. Uh, Brooks Kepo, Kepko is still on top, if I remember. I correctly. think by like two strokes. I think yeah, because I think he was like twelve under to ten under mm-hmm. was the next closest. Um, so it wasn't like he was necessarily close at the time, but he just played such a good Sunday round in that final round. So yeah, you got to give credit where credit's due, and and he had a he had a great round. Um, that's his second. Major win. He's yeah. won the U.S. Open. He's now won the Masters, so he's got two under his belt, and and uh, he's one of those that's probably deserving. I would I would say for sure. Uh, you know, it, the there was a big storyline this week just because of uh, that Sam Bennett kid, yeah, right? Dude. That came out of nowhere as an amateur and was in second place in the second day. Yeah. He was or in the last day, he was at one point in second place. Now he had a few too many bogeys in that. Um, in that final round that pushed him back. But it was really the third round and the fourth yeah, round. He yeah. shot a 76 on in, well, which was supposed to be Saturday. He shot a 76 in the third round. Yeah, that Sunday morning, I guess. You're right. It was that Sunday morning yeah. that, that should man, have been the Saturday round. But, man, he came out with two 68s mm-hmm. and was was just playing lights out. And you got to think, though, at some point, playing with these guys that he looks up to so much, playing in Augusta, that – pressure would mount and it would finally kind of get to him and I think it did I think I still think as an amateur I mean he held himself together really really well but you kind of expect that to happen as an amateur I thought yeah. he did fantastic yeah. though I, and pressure is one thing and then I think another thing has to go along with hey um how good are you at playing 
what is it, 72 holes of golf, right? I don't know. Let's ask Brooks Kepka. Yeah, he, he played a solid 54. Yeah, which is what Liv plays. He played great 54, <laughs> right? And so that's the thing. It's, it's hard to play a good 18 sometimes, right? You might play a good 16 of the 18, but if you don't play a good, those, those two could come back to haunt you. When you're playing that many holes of golf, yeah, you have to be spot on, and there are very few people that are. Um, and John Rahm will be the first to admit that first hole was not spot on, but it wasn't quite enough to throw him off. He he did have some really good rounds. So now, as as much as I want to tease the live golfers by only playing fifty four holes and all that kind of stuff, you know, Kepka was he was leading after fifty four. And then you're going to get guys, you know, kind of teasing him a little bit because he plays live. Well, that's that, you know, that's the difference. I got to tip my hat, and I don't, I am not a Phil Mickelson fan, but I'll tell you what. And and when you get to a certain age, and Phil is at that age, there's two things that that factor into this, and, and you hit both of them: yeah. age and yeah. live. And live, yeah. But when you are a certain age, you know what? What's the saying? I can be as good as I once was, but never. Well, the, the, if it's if it's like that country song, it is it's like, like I ain't song. as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever, ever was. was. Yes, yeah. So every now and again, that sun is going to shine on that dog's butt, and Phil will play like he's 32 again. Yeah, and that was this weekend. And that was this weekend. Sunday, he lit it up seven under on Sunday, which was <laughs> that's. I mean, he shot a 65. Really, yeah, and I'm looking at the scores here. It was. It was the low score of that round. I'm not seeing anybody that shot a 65. There was a 66. But, yeah, he shot the best round on Sunday. So hats off to Phil and Lefty. Again, I'm because I, I will get plenty of shots in as we move forward against the live golfers. But, you know, hats off to Phil, man. 52-year-old and, again, just looked really good on Sunday hitting the shots. Yeah. Now, there's something – here with with the masters everything that went on there's a storyline here with the masters that uh, that i'm really excited to talk about and if anything i'm really excited to see in the next season of full swing because i yeah. know they're gonna make this the twist on it look really dramatic yeah and that is just the fact that there's a, a few live golfers that were in that top right 10 or so through that last day and, but, and and that's that's definitely a storyline that we we can't ignore, right? You're talking about Phil, you're talking about Brooks, uh, and you're talking about Cam, right? Yeah, yeah that, right. That were all in there as live golfers uh, towards the end. Uh, and, and in the conversation, maybe is, hey, are these guys still part of that level? Can they compete with the PGA? I mean, there, there's a lot there, but. At the end of the day, you look at it and it's like, okay, no one's watching live golf, though. Right. The fans are that's, not invested in live golf. And that's what's going to happen. Can this sway that, though? Can fans, I don't, are fans going to watch the, the majors or the, the masters okay. and be like, hey, I, uh, those guys did really good. Maybe I should start watching live. I'm, I'm a golf fan. Yeah. And watching Phil, watching Brooksy, watching Smith, watching DJ not make the cut, watching these other live golfers, watching Patrick Reed actually perform very well. You know, the most hated guy in golf. Um, I have, I still have no desire to go find CW on whatever streaming platforms that I have. I still have no desire to go find live. I just don't. I mean, so I, again, there's more fanatics about golf than me. There, I mean, I'm, I think I'm, you know, kind of, I'm, I'm not just a casual fan. I mean, I do love golf. I love watching golf as well. I'll watch tournaments that aren't majors, but I still, I still don't have any desire to go find Lib on the CW. Uh, and, and that's, that's going to be the shame of this is, yeah, Phil and Brooksy. And Patrick Reed, they performed well. And you know what? Now we're not going to hear squat from them until the next major. We just won't. It's true. It's true. I, I had to look it up because I was curious. that I, I wanted to see what their schedule is like. And they do have a tournament coming up um, this this mm -hmm. weekend in Adelaide, Australia. Yeah. And, and it gets I couldn't little, have told like, you that. It's like, okay. <laughs> you know? so, here, so, hey, I, I put a link on our notes. Okay, yeah. see if you can't pull that up here. And I want to get your 
thoughts on this. Um, it's during the presentation um, where, and I think it starts at like seven, seven minutes and 10 seconds in, where he's the, uh, I can't remember the guy's name that pretty much is the voice and everything of the Masters. No, not Jim Nance. The, uh, he's one of the master dudes. But anyways, he goes through and he thanks pretty much every single tour except, and if you, when you get that pulled up, let me know. And I want to yeah, get your close. thoughts. I want to get your thoughts on if I'm just reading into this or if, or if there is, you know, something, if there's something there, like what do they think about the live tour? Let's go ahead and listen to this. Gotcha. All right. Let me, uh, let's get it pulled up too for our viewers on, yeah. on, on YouTube and we'll, let's get to it. Let's see what he says. Ceremony. There are some special friends from around the world who are with us this week. I would like to acknowledge these organizations and I would ask that you please hold your applause until I have recognized everyone. The USGA, the RNA, the PGA of America, the PGA Tour, the LPGA, the DP World Tour. I want to thank all of you for your help in making the Masters a success. So am I, am I reading into this? Like I said, he, he names every single tour out there that has professional golfers. I mean, the, he even names, he even the, names LPGA. the LPGA. <laughs> yeah, he names yeah. the LPGA. And then the DP tour is is like the core fairy. No, it's our it? it's 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 the it's the European oh, PGA. Gotcha, so gotcha. they're on the same yeah. level and, and they're partners as well. So you can go play the DP tour and you can also play the PGA tour. Correct. Right. That so um I mean, is that a mistake on their part, an oversight, or is was live kept out on purpose? Um, it makes me think that Liv might've been kept out on purpose. Oh, I, I believe I mean, that wholeheartedly. I, I, these guys are way I know too how smart. These guys are. They're way too smart. Well, there's, there's so much, let's just call it what it is. There's so much anger and frustration coming out from these, especially these old time golfers. And I mean, even as golf fans. Now, I'm not an old time golf fan, right? I, I've been getting into the sport, especially like watching the sport, right? Only over the last couple of years, right? And so I don't have the dedication to the PGA that everyone else does, but I also know what that would be like in other sports. Now, it's so hard to compare because there's not a lot of sports like golf mm -hmm. when it comes to the way it's just structured. But um, yeah, I, I look at this and, and I just I see it as hey, there's there's so much tradition in golf, and it's not that live is necessarily playing in a style that takes away that tradition, but they are financed from a country that has a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. just, yeah, just exactly. Put it plainly. Yes, and, and people will have issues with that. And, right, and so yeah, you know, I I fully understand why they don't want to acknowledge it because they look at it as more of like a money grab than mm -hmm. it is a professional sport. And, and you know what? I, I respect the guys that have come out and said that. Like, um, gosh, I just saw, I just read a story the other day, and I, for, for whatever reason, I can't remember the golfer who was, who was saying, he was a live golfer, PGA Tour, and then went to live, made the jump. And he was saying, he goes, to all these I'm going to paraphrase. Paraphrase away. Yeah, because there were a lot of, he's like, these golfers that left PGA Tour and went to live because they want to, and for our radio audience, I'm going to do air quotes here, but our YouTube audience will be able to see it, to grow the game. He goes, that is BS. And he actually said the, you know. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, um, I'm sure he did. He goes, it's, it, we went for the money. And you know what? I can respect that a lot more. Then was somebody saying, I don't know if it was Bryson or not. I can't remember. For some reason, again, I'm a and I'm, I feel I'm like, Bill Mickelson's yeah, age. Sorry. Fair. Hey, I, I do feel like it was somebody. It was a, it was a decent name though. It was it a well, was. It was a well known yeah. name that that 
that said, no, I'm going for the money. Yeah. <laughs> like, they're paying me a lot of money to go. Of course yeah. I'm going to go. And, you know, is it is it the kind of money you want to take? Well, you know what? Given the same option, would I turn it down? Probably not. Well, I will say Brooks Kepka was one of those guys that wasn't very uh, quiet about his reasons for going over. And it was basically that. He's just like, it's a steady stream of income. Yeah. I want the steady stream of income because he hadn't been playing right, well. Right, right. Uh, and so why not make that jump? Now, the irony comes that he did play well, actually, at this last major, of course. Well, he says he's but, healthy and he's getting his game back, so we'll yeah. have to see. But here, but that's the problem. But what is, would it look like if he was on the PGA Tour? Yeah, 80% of the of the viewing audience won't know how he's progressing because they, they won't take the time to go find the CW and watch these live tournaments. I'm not going to. Especially when they're playing in... in a lot of the times they're playing outside of the United States. So sometimes these tournaments are starting at weird times, especially if it's Australia. They're mm -hmm. probably playing these tournaments starting at what, like 930 at night. It would be if it's Australia, yeah. you know, and they're playing it until seven in the morning. Yeah. I'm not watching. <laughs> I mean, yeah. at least not live. I know it's a, it's a strange deal. And, and again, I know there's a lot of conversation PGA versus live and, and, for all of our audience, I, I definitely lean towards PGA. I, I guess I'm an old school guy that way, but you know, it, it's going to be fun to watch. You know, moving forward in the next few majors and see see what happens. I know there were a lot of people rooting for Brooks Kepka, not because they wanted Live Tour to win, and I think you were one of them. I was them. one, and I, you know, it's funny. I talked to someone in the office, but and they, they said just I wanted him to do well for the chaos. The chaos, yeah. I the just chaos. wanted the chaos. They wanted yes. So. It'll be interesting watching the the majors going forward when the Open is here and the U.S. Open and all of that kind of stuff. And it, it, it'll be fun to watch for sure. It will be for sure. For I, sure. I still think Scheffler and John Rahm are the best, the two best players in the world. I don't even know if there's an argument to be made. I think those two are are just so skilled and they're playing at the top of their game right now. I know Scheffler, you know, didn't repeat really never was in contention but i still think scheffler and rom are certainly certainly the best yeah i agree they're, Man, they're, they're one, playing good they're one and two if you ask me as well mm -hmm.